Hi folks, my name is Patrick and welcome to my new channel, Patrick Scale Studio. Um, this is a new venture for me as far as posting content on YouTube. So if you have any constructive criticism, please provide me that feedback so I can get better. Thanks. Um, today's topic is going to be opening a brand new, new toolkit by I Love Kit called USS Curtis Wilbur DDG-54. It stands for Guided Missile Destroyer. Um, it's in 1-200 scale, and this was just released in November. The kit is comprised of 1,300 and more pieces of plastic and photo etch, and the completed kit should measure 30 and a quarter inches long by approximately four and a half inches wide. So make sure you have plenty of room to display your completed model when you're all finished. The USS Curtis Wilbur in particular is the fourth ship of the class of the Arleigh Burke destroyer class um, and is part of the flight one of that class. So if you know anything about uh, guided missile destroyers or the Arleigh Burke destroyer class, uh, one, they're all guided missile destroyers, since the DDG and not DD. And then two, they're all divided into four flights currently. So this is uh, number four of the first flight. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look at the box at the top. So as you can see, there is wonderful rendering and artwork there of the actual kit subject with it looks like a nuclear carrier, maybe the, I'm not sure, in the background. Uh, and if we look at the kit sides here, we can see some beautiful 3D renderings there of various features of the kit on the completed kit. And it looks like the gold parts of this are the photo etch portions of it. And then over here, we can see just a general layout of the photo etch frets and the decal sheet. There's also some warnings in multiple languages. On the other side of the box side, we've got uh, the finished kit and different pictures of the angles and parts of the finished kit, along with kind of a generalized look of what the color should be of the kit from the top down. Uh, also, it looks like the kit should be including an SH-60 Bravo uh, Seahawk helicopter. So, other than that, pretty basic box top. So let's go ahead and have a look at the kit itself. Here are the instructions. And it's a pretty comprehensive book. I won't spend time going over every page of this. As you can see, it looks like it's a fairly complex model. Um, one interesting thing about this kit that I haven't seen in some other 1-200 kits by Trumpeter is it comes with its own display stand. Here is the color instructions for it. Um, note, it's got all the different colors here in uh, different manufacturers, but to me is also on that. Um, I haven't seen that in the past on certain 1-200 scale kits so that's a nice addition. As you look through this, you will notice as far as color callouts go, there are none. There are no color callouts here. So you're going to have to go off of resources on the internet, uh, any kind of resources you might have in the forms of the books, or just go with what you like. So. We go ahead and pull out the hole. You see everything is sealed in plastic still, just for clarity. Sake of clarity, I did actually lift the box top off of after first receiving this just to make sure nothing was obviously damaged, but past that I didn't remove anything. So we'll go ahead and open this up and have a look at what put it in the box. So one thing I've always appreciated about Trumpeter I Love Kits or Hobby Boss Kits is there's plenty of packaging to help protect the pieces. Uh, just foam wrapped around all the pieces. Pulling that away. And here we can see there is the one piece hull. Well, mostly one piece. It looks like we're gonna have to add something here to complete that, um, this particular Class of Ships has got a bulbous bow, but that looks very nice. It's 
fairly well detailed. Various raised bumps, raised details, sections for the rudders and the propellers. If we go on to look at the one piece deck, um, it's actually missing a section of the back deck, but it looks like that would be a lower spot. So it makes sense that there is two pieces there, but this is great in that it's made in one piece. There's no weird seams to have to worry about filling and make them look right, 100% smooth. And again, the details quite nice on there. Looks like this is for the uh, Tomahawk missile systems. And this would be for the five inch gun, main superstructure. Looks like this is going to be part of the uh, the funnel or uh, you know funnel system, and then back here on that lower deck that's not currently here. That's going to be where the Seahawk would be landing. Okay, right beneath that is the photo wedge, which we'll set aside for now, and we'll move on to other parts here. So this right here looks like that is the remaining pieces of the hull, propellers, the shafts and a bilge gills. The detail looks good. The moldings look good. Looks like the propellers are even handed as they're supposed to be. Everything looks clean. Here we've got the nameplate and looks like some exterior bulkheads. Here is our Seahawk helicopter. And again, as I was saying, these kits usually have quite a bit of protection around parts that are gonna need it. So as we can see, there is the four bladed rotor for the Seahawk and it's really well protected by this foam. Looks like this entire sprue is for the five inch gun that goes up front of the boat or the ship. Here is the rest of the deck of the ship. And this is the aft part where the Seahawk would be landing. Again, I'd like to point out the detail on that is amazing and all these little dimples would be the tie downs. Um, I'm not gonna get a lot more detail than that because of one 200 scale, it would it would just be virtually impossible to see anyway, but that is fantastic, fantastic mold. All right, I do not know what this is, so we will have to have a look. This just looks like various bits and pieces, tiny little details that are really going to help bring the ship to ship to life after it's completed. Okay, here we've got some more exterior bulkheads. It's like uh, some type of door and plenty of more details to add. Looks like they're in fact as part of the anchor or an anchor. Okay, this right here looks like a part of the funnel. Go ahead and take this out and take a look. I love Kid Hobby Boss and Trumpeter are well known in my opinion for having great slide molding molds. Um, this one here is Absolutely no exception. Uh, the detail is really crisp around each side of this. You don't have the typical, it's hard to say exactly where, you know, what it is, but I could describe it as the details being soft due to limitations of mold. Uh, but that is not the case here. And we've got some more details over here on the side. Looks like we're going to need a knife again. Just 
cut this tape off here. There and plenty of more details. It looks like this is all going to be the mast, the main mast on a lot of the electronic systems, radio systems, that, that sort of thing. We'll move on to this. This looks like two identical sprues. And it looks like we've got a couple of rigid inflatable boats and a bunch more details to go around and really help bring the whole completed kit to life as a ship. That's incredible. The detail is just amazing. Looks like we've got some antennas there, various domes. All right, move on to what looks to be like the main superstructure. And again, if you know anything about slide molding, that is very impressive. That is very, very impressive. Everything there is really crisply done. Let's see what looks like maybe one seam there, one seam over. Yeah, you get the various seams at the corners. But uh, other than that, it looks like cleanup. And it's going to be a breeze. And it looks like it's very well done. So, bravo. We go with more pieces. All right, more funnel systems. Looks like more superstructure. Looks like there are three pieces here. Just like with everything else so far, very crisp detail. You can see the doors. There we go tilt it a little bit so uh, the glare isn't so bad, but you can see all the doors molded in. All the detail right there just pops if you can get it in the right light. So I think under some paint and a wash, that'll really come to life. That'll really pop out. Like another bit to the superstructure and Yet again, another bit to the superstructure. Let's see if we can get that to show up. In, yeah, there we go. Outstanding. Right here looks to be the main part of the display, pay, display base for the kit. And it looks like they included some copper chain. That would be great to go with the anchor. I'm not worried. Out opening this yet because I don't want to lose that tiny little bag chain. All right, and as with all of I Love Kit, Hobby Boss, or Trumpeter kits, they usually, for their bigger kits, have boxes within boxes. This one certainly no exception. But it is nice, and that is very helpful for preventing things from getting lost. Like these are all just a bunch of various small sprues of a lot of details, parts of the superstructure. A lot of these are really tiny duplicate sprues. These are definitely the funnels that come out of the boxier funnel structures. like how these have been slide molded. Um, so I can show you. I would have expected, and I think you would see with most kit manufacturers, that something circular like this would come in halves and then leave you with a seam to deal with on each side. That is not the case here. So there's detail that goes all the way down to the flat bottom. That is superb. All 
Alrighty, it looks like this right here are parts that deal with the Harpoon missile system. It sits on top of the deck. So you get uh, four of these sprues, four identical sprues. It's like uh, more greeblies, bits and bobs and pieces that go into the main mast or possibly the superstructure to Yeah, that'd be for the electronics, um, you know, the kind of different systems the ship uses. Unsure of what these are, possibly torpedo tubes. So right here are two sprues for the SeaWiz systems. If, uh, SeaWiz is CWIS, and that is, is two Gatling guns, one on each end of the ship that is engaged it engages missiles uh that are incoming to the ship to try to explode them before they hit the ship wonderful detail on those looks like this is the i think it's a two and a half inch gun and again i think it's just part of the ship's um automated defense systems or defense systems for when things are getting in a little too close more duplicate sprues. I'm not sure of what these are, but you get three of these sprues. The detail is fantastic. As you can see, everything is just so tiny, very delicate. And the last of the plastic, last of the bags of plastic sprues. Absolutely unsure of what this is, but you get two of these. Here is the decals. Go ahead and open this up. And got it nicely protected with paper. I'm sticking. Right. You can see that. I've had uh, varying degrees of luck with decals that come in either Trumpet or Hobby Boss or I Love kit kits, uh, but these look to be properly aligned. All the colors properly aligned, not off register. Everything looks pretty bright. Everything looks pretty legible and clear. This looks like a nice sheet of decals. And move this aside. We'll have a look at the photo etch. The biggest package is right here. It looks like for the most part this is any of the larger pieces or any of the railing. So you also get some ladders in there. And it is nicely protected with plastic on both sides. That glare. flip side, more railings, more ladders, and some of the larger structures like this. This is going to require a lot of bending. Okay, this one looks to be interesting. Uh, a lot of the vents, and this is very, very, very fine. Let's see if you can kind of make that out there on the camera very fine mesh so that'll look incredible on the kit and i think from what i've seen so far this is part of the vertical launch system for the tomahawk missiles i believe you can build this with a couple of the doors open and that looks like yeah you get two identical sprues And last but not least, again, two identical sprues. It looks like just various pieces that go to uh, some of the sub-assemblies that are going to get put onto the ship to really help make that detail pop.
as far as the kit contents go, that is everything that was in the box. If there is something you'd like to see more of, anything that you'd like further clarification on, again, just give me some feedback. I'd be happy to get that put into a video form or even, uh, you know, provide the answer where I can. Um, the last thing I wanted to go over is some basic tools I'm going to use for the kit because this is not a beginner's kit. Some of the tools are a little advanced if you're thinking about starting this. Um, a couple super glues. The black thick super glue, it uh, sets really slowly and it also has a little bit of a flex. And then I also like to use a medium gap filling CA glue. I've got some accelerator and anytime you use any CA glue, you want a solvent. Also for use with that, I have a fiberglass pencil kind of help wipe away any extra. My solvent-based adhesives, this would be for larger assemblies. It's uh, going to take a little bit of time to set, but it's a really good, strong bond. Um, and then this for any of the smaller pieces where I just want a quick instant bond, not instant, but within 15, 20 seconds. There'll be various times where I'll need to be using micro drills to open up uh, spots for part placement or to open up holes to make it uh, a little bit more detailed, provide that extra, extra level of effort. Optivizer right there. Um, currently at my age, I absolutely, this is a must. To me, a tape, this is gonna be helpful when painting the ship at the very end, but also very helpful while I'm building it for holding parts together while glue sets. Wax pencil. This is something uh, new for me that I'm going to try. I haven't used this before. I used to use just tweezers, but uh, this should be useful for picking up small pieces of photo etch and help placing them on there without the need for tweezers. kit with as much photo etch as this one is going to require some photo etch bending tools. I currently have two. Want this big one by Despay. It's very nice. It's dual knobbed. There's the bending part of it. And then the smaller one, if I really, you know, this is a big kit. It's taking up a lot of space. So if I really need to move over or something like that, and just with a small little piece, this is perfect. I always have a couple different X-Acto knives. Just a regular standard X-Acto knife, chisel blade, and then this is fantastic for cutting out photo etch parts because you can use it to roll across the attachment points where the part attaches to the fret. Maybe a time when I need to scribe a line or rescribe a line that got damaged by uh, filling or glue. This would be used for spreading putty. And several different tweezers. Additionally, standard to me and nippers. And this is good for holding something down and you can lock it in place. So if I have like a piece of photo etch that I need to work on, I don't have to worry about putting any pressure on these. I can just lock it down with the photo etch in there and hold it while I work with that piece. My normal sanding sticks are 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. And that gets it down to that baby smooth finish where paint doesn't show up any sanding marks whatsoever. A straight edge occasionally comes in handy. Sanding sponge also comes in handy for rounded parts where I kind of want, I don't want flat marks from sanding. And last but not least, I have a piece of granite tile. I got this for a couple of bucks a long time ago, and it is the perfect solution for taking a photo etch sheet and being able to identify all of the attachment points. It's black, so this shows up really well against it, and it also has no give. So when you're cutting the photo etch attachment points, there is no deflection to the brass whatsoever. With all of that said, I am planning on building this kit and creating more content 
or YouTube to bring you all with me while I build it. Uh, I'd like to get at least one episode in a week, hopefully more. Also along the way, I'm going to be sharing with, uh, with you other projects that I've got in various stages. Um, I like to build uh, military vehicle models, airplane models, and of course, ship models. If you've got anything you'd like to see, or again, you got any constructive criticism, please feel free to share that with me. Thank you very much for your time.